Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes How to have the perfect holiday in your 60s. Why are the world's miners so stingy? Madam Webb at $26 million spells trouble for Sony superheroes. Most forgotten presidents, Rutherford Hayes, three other Ohioans make top 10 list, quiz shows. Ilya Tapiria lukewarm on Alexander Volkanovsky rematch after UFC 298, time for the new generation. How to have the perfect holiday in your 60s. Telegraph. The travel industry is catering more and more to older travelers in their 60s, who are seeking unique and fulfilling experiences. Travel influencer Siobhan Daniels has inspired others with her memoir, The Retirement Rebel, which details her decision to sell her possessions and travel full-time in her motorhome. There are now targeted tours for this age group, including group retreats, nature sabbaticals, and active cruise itineraries. Walking tours specialist Ramble Worldwide designs itineraries specifically for discerning 60-somethings who enjoy immersive experiences and comfortable accommodation. Small group adventure travel company Intrepid saw a 116% surge in bookings from 60-somethings in 2023, indicating a growing desire for this age group to explore the world on their own terms. Victory Lab travel is also a popular trend, with many revisiting travel destinations from their youth in greater comfort. Whether traveling alone, with family, in a group, or on a cruise, there are a wide range of options available to 60-somethings looking to make the most of their travel experiences. Why are the world's miners so stingy? Economist. Mining companies are hesitant to invest in new projects due to a lack of investor confidence and rising costs, according to The Economist. Mining firms spent the years after the commodities price crash in 2015 paying off debts instead of financing new projects. While profits and commodity prices have recovered, investment has not. The global economy's decarbonization will require 6.5 billion tons of metal by 2050, the equivalent of a quarter of the market capitalization of the world's 40 largest mining companies in 2022, says the Energy Transitions Commission. Miners are prioritizing expanding existing sites and returning cash to shareholders, while cautious investors are cautious of new projects, which currently have a return of around 7%, compared to a yield of above 5% on investment-grade corporate bonds in the US. Rising costs and permitting delays have also put off mining companies from investing in new projects. Meanwhile, Gulf entities and Chinese firms are increasing their investments in mining assets abroad. Madam Webb at $26 million spells trouble for Sony superheroes. Bloomberg. Sony Pictures has suffered a poor Valentine's Day weekend, with its new Spider-Man spin-off film, Madam Webb, failing to meet targets. The movie is expected to generate $25.8 million in ticket sales over the six-day period. The result was described as a big miss by Joanna Robinson, co-author of MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios. Sony marketed the picture somewhat deceptively. The women are barely in their suits, and that seems a misfire to me, she said. Since acquiring the rights in 1999, Sony has made 10 Spider-Man films, grossing more than $8.9 billion. Most forgotten presidents, Rutherford Hayes, three other Ohioans make top 10 list, quiz shows. Yahoo! Four out of Ohio's seven presidents rank in the top 10 of the most forgotten in U.S. history, according to a quiz by BetVirginia.com. Rutherford B. Hayes, the 19th president, was the most forgotten, followed by Warren G., Harding, James Garfield, and William McKinley, who rounded out the top 10. Ilya Tapiria lukewarm on Alexander Volkanovsky rematch after UFC 298, time for the new generation. Yahoo! Ilya Tapiria has mixed feelings on granting Alexander Volkanovsky an immediate rematch after claiming gold in the UFC 298 main event. Tapiria became the fifth undisputed featherweight champion in company history on Saturday when he scored a violent second-round knockout of Volkanovski at Honda Center. The result was almost exactly what Tapiria predicted coming in, and although some may have doubted him, he knew he would eventually land a big shot and take home the belt. Tapiria thinks the same names have occupied the top of the 145-pound division for the past several years, and part of him wants to see some fresh blood, but he also acknowledges Volkanovski's case to run it back. He's such a good person, Tapiria said. To be honest, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm going to give him the rematch because he's a good person. But at the same time, it's time to move on. It's time to clean up the division a little bit. It's time for the new generation to have new challengers, new faces, and I think I will be looking for that. But to honest, my job is to fight. Whoever they tell me I'm going to have to face and fight next, I will be there. That's it. Tapiria said prior to UFC 298 that he wasn't interested in fighting the likes of Max Holloway, Brian Ortega, or Yair Rodriguez. 
he largely doubled down on that sentiment now that the belt is in his possession. Max Holloway and them, no, they don't make any sense for me right now, Tapuria said. I need new challengers, new ones. There are some upcoming fights. We'll see how they're going to play out. You're going to see El Matador for a while. Asbestos contamination multiplies at public sites in Sydney. New York Times. Traces of asbestos have been found at 34 public sites across Sydney, Australia, including schools and hospitals. The Environmental Protection Agency of New South Wales began testing for asbestos in recycled mulch in the city last month and two schools have had to be temporarily closed. The authorities have been testing mulch on the grounds of Sydney Olympic Park, where Taylor Swift is scheduled to perform four shows starting on Friday, but these tests have come back negative. If inhaled, asbestos can cause lung diseases such as asbestosis, lung cancer and mesothelioma. Roy and Shaquille star in Quetta's 16 run win over Peshawar in PSL. Associated Press. Quetta Gladiators won their opening match of the Pakistan Super League against Peshawar Zalmi by 16 runs. Jason Roy and Saad Shaquille scored 75 and 74 runs respectively to help Quetta post a total of 206 to 5. In response, Peshawar started strongly with Babar Azam and Saim Ayub putting on a 90-run partnership, but they faltered in the latter part of the innings and finished on 190-6. Quetta made several changes this season, including appointing Riley Rosso as captain and bringing in Shane Watson and Sean Tate as coaches. They also drafted Muhammad Amir for the first time. Amir took 1-29 in the match. Olympic show jumper stood down for wearing mankini while riding horse. The Independent. Australian equestrian Shane Rose has been stood down from competition after wearing a mankini during a showjumping event. Rose, who has won three Olympic medals, apologized for any offense caused by his outfit choice and hopes the incident will not affect his Olympic preparation. Equestrian Australia is reviewing the matter after concerns were raised about Rose's attire, but has insisted he has not been suspended. Riders were encouraged to wear fancy dress for the event, and many members of the equestrian community have shown solidarity with Rose by changing their Facebook profile pictures to Borat. Climate change is pushing us towards an uninsurable world. South China Morning Post. Climate change is leading the world towards an uninsurable future, warns David Dodwell in the South China Morning Post. Rising insurance premiums reflect the damage humans have collectively done to the planet. The Bank of International Settlements predicts U.S. property losses from climate change-related natural disasters could rise by 60% by 2040, with premiums expected to increase by 2.4% annually. In the UK, the government-backed safety net flood re is the only option for 260,000 homeowners who are either refused cover or cannot afford the premiums. Catastrophe modeler Air Worldwide found just 25% of economic losses from natural disasters are insured globally. Australia wants Japan to collaborate with AUKUS on defence tech. Japan Times. Australia's Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister, Richard Merlees, has expressed interest in collaborating with Japan on defence technology development. While Japan is not currently participating in the AUKUS project to deliver nuclear-powered submarines to Australia, Merlees acknowledged Japan's innovation and technological capabilities. He stated that it is natural to discuss greater cooperation between the US, UK, Australia, and Japan in joint collaborations moving forward. Paris Olympics doubt for top Australian equestrian after Mankini ride. South China Morning Post. Australian equestrian Shane Rose has been stood down from competition by Equestrian Australia, EA, after wearing a Mankini swimsuit during a showjumping event. The outfit, made famous by the movie Borat, was worn by Rose during a competition near Sydney where riders were encouraged to wear costumes. The governing body is conducting a review after receiving complaints about Rose's attire. Rose, a three-time Olympic medalist, expressed his apology on social media and hopes that the review will not affect his campaign towards the Paris Olympic Games. Fellow equestrians have criticized EA's reaction, calling it a massive overreaction. The Migrant Boost, How Immigrants to Australia Are Lifting Wages. The Sydney Morning Herald. Research conducted by the OECD has found that migrants coming to Australia increase productivity and raise wages for all locals, particularly those with lower skills or less education. The research, based on payroll records from 2011 to 2018, showed that areas with higher migrant numbers tended to have higher productivity levels. Migrants to Australia were found to have higher levels of tertiary education than those in other countries, and a one percentage point increase in annual migrant numbers boosted the employment levels of locally born Australians by 0.53%.
The research did not explore the impact on the housing market or infrastructure needs. Greetings, viewers of the Six Dimensional Briefing. I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Dimensional World. Today, I bring you a diverse range of news stories that cover everything from travel trends for those in their 60s to the impact of climate change and the world of sports. So, let's dive in. First up, we have an exciting development in the travel industry. It seems that the older generation is not slowing down when it comes to exploring the world. Travel companies are now catering specifically to those in their 60s, offering unique and fulfilling experiences such as group retreats, nature sabbaticals, and active cruise itineraries. This surge in bookings from 60-somethings indicates a growing desire for this age group to explore the world on their own terms. So, if you're in your 60s, it's never too late to embark on an adventure. Next, we turn our attention to the world of mining. It appears that mining companies are being stingy with their investments in new projects. The lack of investor confidence, rising costs, and a focus on returning cash to shareholders have led to a hesitancy to fund new ventures. This is a concerning trend, especially considering the growing demand for metals in the global economy's decarbonization efforts. It seems that miners are prioritizing existing sites and cautious investors are shying away from new projects. Perhaps it's time for some creative solutions to get the mining industry back on track. Now, let's talk movies. Sony Pictures has experienced a disappointment with its latest Spider-Man spin-off film, Madam Web. The movie fell short of expectations, generating lower ticket sales than anticipated. Some critics have pointed out that the marketing may have been misleading, leading to audience disappointment. Despite this setback, Sony has had great success with its Spider-Man franchise in the past, grossing billions of dollars. It seems that even superheroes have their off days. Moving on to a lighter topic, we have an interesting quiz that reveals the most forgotten U.S. presidents. According to the quiz, four out of Ohio's seven presidents rank in the top ten of the most forgotten. Poor Rutherford Hayes takes the top spot as the most forgotten president. It's fascinating to see how history can sometimes overlook certain individuals, even those who held the highest office in the land. So, let's take a moment to remember these forgotten leaders and their contributions. In the world of sports, we have an MMA champion who is lukewarm about granting an immediate rematch to his opponent. Ilya Tapuria, the newly crowned featherweight champion, has mixed feelings about giving Alexander Volkanovsky another shot at the title. While acknowledging Volkanovsky's case, Tapuria also believes it's time for new challengers and fresh faces in the division. It seems like Tapuria is ready to take on all comers and make his mark as the champion. So, let's keep an eye on the exciting developments in the featherweight division. Our next story takes us to Sydney, Australia, where traces of asbestos have been found at public sites, including schools and hospitals. This is a concerning discovery, as asbestos can cause serious health issues if inhaled. The authorities are taking measures to address the contamination and ensure the safety of the public. It's a reminder that even in modern times, we must remain vigilant about potential hazards and take steps to protect ourselves and our communities. In the world of cricket, Quetta Gladiators emerged victorious in their opening match of the Pakistan Super League against Peshawar Zalmi. Jason Roy and Saad Shakil led the charge with impressive runs, helping Quetta secure a 16-run win. It's always thrilling to see the excitement and competition in the world of sports, and this match was no exception. Let's hope for more thrilling moments in the upcoming matches. Now, let's turn our attention to a rather amusing story from the equestrian world. Australian rider Shane Rose has been stood down from competition after wearing a mankini during a showjumping event. While riders were encouraged to wear fancy dress, it seems that Rose's outfit choice caused some controversy. Equestrian Australia is reviewing the matter, and Rose has apologized for any offense caused. It's a reminder that even in the world of sports, dress codes and expectations can sometimes lead to unexpected situations. Let's hope this incident doesn't overshadow Rose's preparations for the upcoming Olympics. Lastly, we have a thought-provoking piece on climate change and its impact on the insurance industry. Rising insurance premiums reflect the damage we have collectively done to the planet. As the effects of climate change intensify, insurance companies are finding it increasingly challenging to provide coverage for natural disasters. This raises concerns about the future insurability of certain regions and the need for proactive measures to mitigate the risks posed by climate change. It's a sobering reminder that we must take action to protect our planet and ensure a sustainable future. And that's a wrap for today's news. I hope you enjoyed this eclectic mix of stories. Now, it's your turn to join the discussion. What are your thoughts on the growing trend of travel for those in their 60s? Do you have any ideas on how to encourage mining companies to invest in new projects? And what are your views on the impact of climate change on the insurance industry? 
I can't wait to hear your perspectives, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts and questions. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the six dimensions of our ever-changing world. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.